that. Let's just revise that quickly. Our basic format for sine, and I'll only draw it from zero, okay, was it looked like that sine passed through the origin, okay, it reached a maximum height of one and a minimum depth of negative one, okay, and it reached that at 90 degrees and this depth at 270 degrees okay and then this whole cycle took 360 degrees 360 degrees now this cycle the length of the cycle the 360 degrees is called the period okay the period is 360 degrees while this maximum height that I reach okay the maximum height that I reach is called the amplitude I didn't mention that in the previous video I'm mentioning it here amplitude okay, the amplitude is this maximum height reached in this case is 1 now another thing I didn't mention is I want you just to just notice that here we have a center line a line that passes through the center of this graph this graph will continue to go do the exact same thing up onto in eternity and in the opposite direction it just is doing the same thing just in the opposite direction okay so it's going for infinity to the left and for infinity to the right but what I do want to say is that through this whole graph that's now going to look like this all the way up forever and ever just prettier than that there is a line that cuts it right in the center that I like to call the center line I don't know if that's really a name for it but I call it the center line okay and here the center line we see is just the x-axis so we're working with x and y and here the center line is the x-axis or the line y is equal to zero that's the center line and we have all of the information that we need in order to go and draw this graph sorry I forgot to just mention that here's smack in the middle between 0 and 360 at 180 degrees I'm again at 0 I'm just heading down so this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to first of all give you the format for the general uh, sign graph so the general sign graph this was just the simplest one fx the basic one fx is equal to sine of x okay the general sign graph is fx is equal to a times sine in other words something is multiplying this graph okay something is multiplying this graph okay but something is also multiplying the input angle so X is the angle that's going into sine but whatever angle is going into sine gets multiplied with P okay and then we are going to subtract something from it as well okay angle another angle B okay and finally when this is now going to be the the whole uh, angle that's going to be calculated from this expression goes into sine sine calculates the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse we get an answer the answer will be somewhere between 0 and uh, sorry somewhere between 1 and negative 1 that number is going to now be multiplied with another number a afterwards we are going to add a final number that I'm going to call C now just to remind you when we did functions and graphs that a p b and c are called parameters parameters and it's parameters that determine the look of the graph some determine its shape some determine its position okay the two shape parameters is a and p they determine the shape the two position to parameters is or are B and C sorry not positive position okay the two shape parameters are A and P and the two position parameters are B and C they determine the position okay how do these values influence 
my sketch well let's first of all look at the most basic influence and that is plus C so let's just add a C to this expression so if I had a function fx is equal to sine of x plus c okay notice that this part is my basic format okay so let's just go and draw that basic format okay there's the basic should have actually do it in a dotted line a dotted basic I'm doing a very rough sketch of it we know that that is 90 degrees that is 180 degrees this is 0 degrees that is negative or oh, 270 degrees okay and this is 360 degrees okay now since I told you that that C is a position I want you to notice that the shape has not changed okay which means that the period is still 360 and the maximum height at reach because those are all dependent on the shape is still 1 so this thing's period is still 360 and the maximum height it reaches is still 1 but C is a positional parameter which means it changes the position of this graph and you can notice that all it does is every Y value now gets added a constant value okay so where I used to be at 1 maybe I'm adding 2 now all of a sudden I'm at 3 okay so uh, let's let's make C negative so that it moves down because I've got more space here at the bottom okay so the lowest point I ever reached was negative 1 so let's just use an example let's say C is equal to negative 2 that means whatever value comes out here gets subtracted with 2 so where I used to get 0 now all of a sudden it's going to 0 minus 2 so the first point I'm going to reach is not negative 1 it is going to be negative 2 or it's not 0 it's going to be 2 lower so I'm going to start my graph here where I used to be at 90 degrees um, at the point 90 comma 1 it's now going to be 90 comma 1 minus 2 so that's negative 1 I'm going to be at negative 1 and I see and I'm just drawing this line there at 180 I would have been at 0 but now 2 is subtracted so I'll be at negative 2 at 270 I would have been at negative 1 but another negative 2 is subtracted so now I'm at negative 3 negative 3 at 360 I used to be at 0 but minus 2 I'll now be here so the, uh, look at this the only thing that happened is this graph moved down two units and that is why I called it C because I hope you notice that my center line has moved the center line so I call C the center line this constant that's added outside of the sine function is called the center line because that and it's an imaginary line please don't draw it in just draw it in slightly and f on this becomes now what used to be your axis and you just number there is 90 degrees 180 degrees to 70 degrees if C would have been something like 5 I would have at y equal to 5 so y equal to C is my center line y equal to 5 would be my center line and I would do exactly what I did on my x-axis I will just do on the line y is equal to C y is equal to 5 y is equal to 7 whatever that is I hope that has sufficiently demonstrated to you that C is a position parameter it moves the position of my graph let's look at the next one a okay so let's see what a does to the basic shape so if I have y is equal to a sine of x you see again we just have the basic the basic one here 
so let me go and draw the basic the basic graph sorry the basic graph like that and again this would be at 90 degrees at 270 this is 180 and that is 360 306. Now, whenever I draw any type of graph, I always draw my basic one, and usually I just draw it w as uh, dotted lines. I'm not focusing now to do that. So, usually I just draw it as a dotted line. Okay, just making more work for myself by forgetting. Okay, so there's my basic shape. So, what is going to happen when I multiply the basic shape with a constant? Well, again, notice that if x is something like 0 then sine of 0 will just equal 0 but that is going to be multiplied with a so every output is now being multiplied with a so if we assume something like a is equal to 2 so for example every number coming out I'm multiplying with a 2 so when 0 comes out it gets multiplied with 2 and it stays 0 so there would be my point. For, so I'm, let me draw this. fx is equal to 2 sine of x. What will that graph look, look like? Well, let's go to 90. At 90, I will get an output of 1. But 1 will be multiplied with 2. So now my output is 2. So my next point would be there. At 180, my output again, sine of 180 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So that my graph is back there. So what has happened? It looks almost like this thing has been stretched vertically. Vertically. Okay, how about at uh, 270? I used to get out a negative 1, but now the negative 1 gets multiplied with 2 to give me negative 2. Okay. So I see this thing is not just stretched towards the top, it's also stretched towards the bottom. So it's literally stretched vertically. Okay. However, its position hasn't changed. It's still in the same position. It's still on this center line, but it's now stretched. What has then changed? Do you notice? It's the height that I'm reaching. So amplitude has changed and now I want to give you a new definition for amplitude amplitude is the height it reaches above the center line center line because and now you can see this one's amplitude the amplitude for this graph the maximum height it reaches above its center line which in this case is just y is equal to 0 is 2 so the amplitude is 2 and look how easy this makes it to draw a more complex function okay so let's say um, y is equal to negative 3 sine x plus 1 okay so if I had to go and draw that that one I'm going to have one two three there I see first thing I'm going to have to do is draw my center line my center line is at one okay y is equal to one so there's my imaginary center line and here would be my sine graph remember sine graph now moves up down up never reaching more than one unit above this would be my basic one would only reach one unit up Okay, at 100, and that would be at 90 degrees, so there's my 90 degrees. At 180 degrees, I'm back on my center line. At 270, I'm at my lowest point. At, uh, and at 360, I'm back to do the same thing over again. Okay, so what does negative 3, every value that now comes out, must be multiplied with a negative 3. Okay, so the point that used to be here is still there okay because sine of 0 is 0 0 times negative 3 is still 0 plus 1 so 0 
plus 1 would be there. Let me change my colors. Okay, would be there. But what happens when I'm at 90? Well, sine of 90 would equal 1. 1 times negative 3 is equal to negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 would give me negative 2. So then I'll be at negative 2. Okay, this looks odd. Okay, instead of going from here 3 units up, I went 3 units down. Okay. Actually, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Sorry, I went to negative 1. Negative 2 will be there. Okay, negative 1, negative 2. It's because I'm not numbering my axes. That's 1, 2, 3. Okay, then, so that one must be ignored. Let's erase it. There we go. Then when I'm at 0, okay, when, uh, sorry, at 180 degrees. When I'm at 180 degrees, sine of 180 would give me 0. 0 times negative 3 would be 0. Okay, 0 plus 1 would just be 1. So I'll be back here again. Okay. 270 would give me negative 1. If I've got sine of 270, I'll get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So I'm going to have to go up a little bit more. 4. When I'm at 270, I'll reach a height of 4. Okay. And then at 360, obviously I'm back at my center line again. So look at this graph. This graph now looks like this. Okay, not as ugly as mine. Hopefully you can do it more smooth on paper than I can do on the computer. Okay, try that again. I think that's a bit better. Yeah, this is more or less what it looks like. And again, let's decide on the period for this graph. In other words, how long does it take to complete this whole cycle? You can see the cycle seems to be the wrong way around instead of going up down up it goes goes down up down okay which means that it has been reflected in this center line you notice that it's reflected in the center line it's switched around but the period still just takes 360 degrees okay the period hasn't changed what has changed the amplitude look at that how high is it above the x-axis let's count how many units one sorry not the x-axis the center line one two three units above the center line so the amplitude the amplitude is three three units that it reaches above the center line or three units below the center line it's the same thing okay so that a this value a is the amplitude okay and if it's negative it just flips around the the center line it gets reflected in the center line but knowing that makes it very easy to go and draw this let's look at the last two parameters in the next video so we can cut this one short see you there